All right, buddy. Peace. Welcome to the GSMC Basketball Podcast Show, brought to you by the GSMC uh, Sports Network. As you guys know, I'm Kashawn Cottle, and we have got a wonderful, wonderful show in store for you today, guys. Um, got a lot to cover. We are going to be covering some WNBA playoff action, and we are also going to be uh, breaking down the comparison or the debate of who's the better player between Jalen Brunson and... Trey Young because I think that's an interesting comparison that people have been bringing up as of late and because people are victims of recency bias um, that comparison or that debate of who's better might not go in the way that you think and we're all going to start off the show though with recent uh, comments made by uh, by Giannis Antetokounmpo and what that means for the future of Milwaukee and what that means for his future his future as well and if you haven't already be sure to hit that subscribe button hit that like button as well so you can see other day on all related content and um, if you haven't already be sure to uh, follow us on patreon and subscribe to us you can follow us on patreon uh, by going to patreon clicking in the search bar and type in typing in GSMC sports network you can find us there uh, follow us there uh, to stay up to date on all of our exclusive content that we post daily. And if you would like to uh, support our network, our company, uh, follow the link in the ticker below. It's dreamelements.com slash GSMC Sports Network dot slash tip. Once again, it's dreamelements.com slash GSMC Sports Network dot slash tip. Uh, once again, guys, I know this is possible without you guys, and we're just so grateful for all the support that you guys give us and that you show us. And for tuning in to uh, GSMC Sports to stay up to date on all of your latest sports network, our sports content. Uh, and, you know, it's a blessing to share you guys my thoughts and insight and analysis on the world in the world of basketball. So that being said, guys, let's get right into it. So recent reports have come out. Uh, well, not even reports, really. Uh, more so comments made by All-NBA player Giannis, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Uh, comments that were me- recently made on the 48 Minutes Bleed, Bleed pro- podcast that he was a guest on. And the comments were from Giannis as follows. Uh, as long as we play and we approach the game every single day the right way and we all sacrifice for a common goal, I can see myself being with the Milwaukee Bucks for the rest of my career. Uh, followed by, but the moment I feel like people are not committed as I am to get that golden thing in the back, talk about championship. I'm a Milwaukee Buck, but most importantly, I'm a winner. I want to win. I have to do whatever it takes for me to win. And if there is a better situation for for me to win the Larry O'Brien Trophy, championship trophy, I have to take that better situation. End quote. So pretty uh, staunch comments, uh, but truthful comments made by Giannis Antetokounmpo. Um, this is coming after off season where. Milwaukee re-signed Jay Crowder. Um, they traded for Malik Beasley. And they re-signed Bobby Portis, gave him an extension. And they gave an extension to Drew Holiday as well. So this is a Milwaukee team that essentially re-upped from the previous season. The previous season where they had the best record in the NBA. But as you guys know, fell short in the first round of the NBA playoffs. Losing five games to the eighth seed Miami Heat. So front office management in Milwaukee feels that they have a necessary core group of guys to contend for a championship again. And the record in the regular season last year would uh, would defend that that stance. Uh, and Milwaukee, sorry, not Milwaukee, Giannis is just making it clear, making it clear to the front office that he is willing to take his talents elsewhere. And now the question becomes, is there pressure in Milwaukee um, to win a championship in order to maintain, uh, to keep Giannis? Um, and the question isn't more so is there pressure on Milwaukee but is the pressure on Giannis as opposed to the organization we all know that for all intents and purposes there's only been one player in NBA history two players I might add that have have stayed in small market what someone would consider small to mid-major markets in the NBA their entire careers, and that's Tim Duncan and Dirk Nowitzki. 
Um, and both of those are players that, um, specifically Tim Duncan, that won early on in their career. Um, and those are, those are only two examples in NBA history of superstars that stayed in small to mid-major markets entire career. And if you're Milwaukee, you almost have to expect that Giannis is going to leave elsewhere um, and that he's going to, um, you know, sign with another team when it's time for the free agency market, um, when it's time for him to be a free agent. And, you know, Giannis has never expressed commitment to staying with Milwaukee long term, which is something that he shouldn't do. He should never, especially as an athlete and this being a business, you should never commit to something that you, in the future, that you aren't for certain is going to happen. And and Giannis has done a good job of doing that because now it does keep Milwaukee accountable and then making right front office decisions. And it also gives Giannis leverage and it gives him space to go out and explore his options. And, you know, it, it kind of, it puts him in the catbird seat, honestly. So, um, you know, doing knowing that he's due or is eligible for a three year extension worth one hundred seventy three million dollars on, on September eighteenth. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm wrong about that date, someone let me. Uh, one of you guys let me know. However, uh, you know, I wouldn't expect him to sign that extension right away, knowing how he's done things before. He normally doesn't do negotiation or contract extension talks during the season. He normally waits to the off season to do that which is understandably so is the right way to do things um, business-wise. And there's there's a lot of... I wouldn't say there's pressure on Milwaukee, but more so pressure on Giannis to win a championship now, a quote-unquote another championship, because if we look at who came up short in the playoffs, Milwaukee, like we said, had the best record in the NBA. And like we just said, they resigned their core group of guys so now everything's in place for Giannis to to contend and win another championship and you know Giannis talked about our guys committed um to winning and are they willing to what it takes and that quote that quote doesn't come out of nowhere you know he doesn't just say that by happenstance that tells me that there's something that he's that Giannis sees in the in his teammates not all of them and not even as a whole, but he has seen instances where teammates have not shown, expressed or shown full commitment to doing what it takes to win. And that's what that quote tells me. And that tells me that Giannis might use that as a reasoning for him leaving or to justify his leaving. That's what that tell, That's what that part of the quote tells me. And so it wouldn't surprise me at all if Giannis the, um you know, leaves Milwaukee. I fully expect him to leave Milwaukee, whether he wins another championship or not. So there isn't pressure in that aspect. Uh, if you're the Milwaukee front office organization, to to keep to keep Giannis, um, you have to actually fully expect him to, and almost prepare him, prepare for him to leave. And so then the question starts to become for Milwaukee: Do you allow Giannis to walk for nothing, or do you perhaps trade him to get pieces back? And then that's another conversation that we can get into later on. But I fully expect Giannis to leave. You have to fully expect Giannis to leave your the Milwaukee or organization. Because like we said before, there's only been two superstars that have stayed in mid to look to small market um, franchises throughout the entirety of their career. Like we said, that's Tim Duncan and Dirk Nowitzki. And if you're Giannis, you're you know you're looking at teams like LA. You're you're looking at teams like New York. Big, these these large markets um, that can provide a larger fan base, a larger platform for you to be to be broadcasted on. And um, what this quote tells me is he's in. This tells me that he's almost formulating a justification for his leaving Milwaukee. Um, so it doesn't surprise me at all if if Giannis will leave. I do think he fully expects him to leave. Um, at some point, whether they win another championship or not. And so the pressure isn't on Milwaukee for them to surround the right pieces with Giannis. The pressure is on Giannis to now do something with those pieces for them to uh, for them to win. Uh, and that's what 
that's what this quote tells me um, but it'll be interesting to see what happens when he's eligible for a contract extension uh, in a couple of days actually uh, but guys that is what we have on the recent uh, qu quotes or the recent comments made by Giannis and in our next segment guys we are going to be discussing the the debate, the comparison between Jalen Brunson and Trey Young um, that's been pervasive this past summer on who's the better player. So we're going to cover all of that and then some guys in the next segment. So be sure to stick around. You're not going to miss it.